Chapter 15. Luke sat up, checking his arms to make sure she hadn't broken anything. You're lying, the girl said, but she made no effort to tackle him again. She crouched, looking puzzled for a few moments. Then she grinned. I got it. You're another one. Great code word. I'll have to think about using that for the rally. Now it was Luke's turn to squint in confusion. The girl giggled. I mean, you're another shadow child, right? Shadow? Luke wondered. Why his brain seemed to be slowing down. Was it just because she seemed several miles ahead of him? That's not the term you use, she asked. I thought shadow child was universal, but you know, an illegal. Someone whose parents broke population law 3903, a third. I, I, Luke couldn't bring himself to confess. He'd broken so many taboos today, leaving the house, standing in the open yard, talking to a stranger. Why did one more violation matter? You can say it, the girl coaxed. I'm a third child. Why should there be anything wrong with that? Luke was spared having to answer her because she suddenly sprang to her feet, exclaiming, Oh no, the alarm! She raced down the hall and around the corner. Luke followed to find her jerking open a closet door, then punching buttons on a panel of colored lights. Too late, drat! She ran to a phone, Luke following breathlessly. She dialed. Luke watched in amazement. He never talked on a phone. His parents had told him the government could trace calls, could tell if a voice on a phone was from a person who, had, who was allowed to exist or not. Dad? She made a face. I know, I know. Call the security company and get them to cancel the alarm, okay? And I might remind you that the penalty for harboring a shadow child is $5 million or execution, depending on the mood of the judge. She rolled her eyes at Luke while she listened to what seemed to be a long answer. Oh, you know, these things happen. Another pause. Yeah, yeah, love you too, Dad. Thanks, bye. She hung up. Luke wondered if he should run back to his house immediately before the population case really did show up. They can find you now, Luke said. Just from the phone, the girl laughed. They say, but everybody knows the government's not that competent. Luke started inching toward the back door just in case. But there really was an alarm, he asked. And you have security guards? Sure, doesn't everyone? The girl took another look at Luke. Oh, maybe not. She winced apologetically as soon as she said that. Luke decided to ignore the insult. Do the security guards know you're here? He asked. Of course not, the girl said. If they came, I'd have to hide. Personally, I think my family just has the alarm system to make sure I stay in the house. They don't know I can disable it, but she gave him an evil grin. I set it off sometimes just for fun. That's fun? Luke asked. He thought about, he thought another third child would understand him, but be just like him. This girl sure wasn't. Aren't you scared the guards might find you? Not really, the girl shrugged. And see, doing it on purpose every now and then helped us today. My dad didn't really even ask why this system needed to be stopped. He just thought it was me making trouble again. In a twisted way, she kind of made sense, but trying to figure everything out made Luke's head hurt. He glanced toward the door. If he could just get safely home, he never complained about being born again. Here, he felt as baffled as Alice in Wonderland from one of his old books in the attic. Or he remembered something he'd read in a nature book. Maybe he was like the prey of a snake that hypnotized its victims before it ate them. He didn't think the girl would hurt him, but she might keep him confused and fascinated until the population police or the security guards or someone else arrived. The girl saw where he was looking. Am I scaring you? She asked. Shadow kids can be so jumpy. You're safe, you know. How about if we start over? Would you care for a seat? Uh, what's your name anyway? Luke told her. Nice to meet you, the girl said, shaking his hand in a way that made him feel like she was kind of making fun of him. Then she led him to sit down on a couch in the room he'd first entered. She perched beside him. I'm Jen. Really, it's Jennifer Rose Talbot, but do I look like a Jennifer? She shook her head and spread out her arms, as if Luke should understand something from her rumpled sweatshirt and messy hair. Luke frowned. I don't know, he said. I don't know any Jennifers, just Matthew and Mark and mother and dad. He knew his parents' real names were Edna and Harlan, 
but he wondered if he shouldn't keep that a secret, just in case. Probably he, should have, he shouldn't have even mentioned Matthew and Mark, but he was surprised into it, thinking suddenly about how there was a world full of people outside his house, with a world full of different numbers he'd never heard of, with the different names he'd never heard of. Hmm, the girl said. Then I have to explain. A Jennifer's supposed to be like really girly and prissy. So the joke's on mom. She wanted some frilly little girl she could put in lacy dresses and sit in the corner, like a doll. She paused. Are Matthew and Mark your older brothers? Luke nodded. So you've never met anyone outside your immediate family? Luke shook his head no. Jen looked so amazed he felt he had to defend himself. And you have? He asked with almost the same taunting voice he sometimes used with Mark. Well, yeah, she said. But you're a third child too, he protested. A shadow child, right? He suddenly felt like it might be easy to cry if he let himself. All his life he'd been told he couldn't do everything Matthew and Mark did because he was the third child. But if Jen could go about freely, it didn't make sense. Had his parents lied? Don't you have to hide? He asked. Sure, Jen said. Mostly, but my parents are very good at bribery, and so am I. She grinned wickedly. Then she squinted at Luke. How did you know I was a third child? How did you know I was here? Luke told her. Somehow it seemed important to start with the woods coming down, so it turned into a very long story. Jen interrupted frequently with questions and comments. So you've never been away from your house except to go to your backyard or barn? You've stayed inside for six months? And gosh, you must really hate these houses, huh? And then, when he got to the part about seeing her face in the window, she bit her lip. My dad would kill me if he knew I had done that. But the mirrors were messed up and Carlos bet me if I didn't even know what the weather was outside and, huh? Luke said, mirrors? Carlos? Jen waved away his questions. Luke Garner, she announced solemnly, you have come to the right place. Forget that hiding like a mole stuff. I am your ticket out. Chapter 16. Want any more potatoes, Luke? Mother offered that night at supper. Luke? Her voice got more insistent. Luke! Luke jerked his attention back to his family. Mother was holding the bowl of mashed potatoes out to him. Uh, no, no thanks, I've still got some. More for me, Mark crowed. Luke turned them out again. Luke tuned them out again. He'd barely eaten his first serving of potatoes. He'd been so busy thinking about his visit to the sports family house. He couldn't believe he dared to go. Just the thought of his run through their yard made his heart beat fast, remembering fear and pride. He'd really done it. And then meeting Jen was amazing. There was no other word for it. He was so overwhelmed with wonder at everything he'd seen at her house everything she told him, that he started to say, Dad, did you know that Jen... At the last minute, he clamped his teeth shut, holding the words in. He thought he'd burst. He could feel his face flush with red. The effort of keeping... Flush with red with the effort of keeping still. He bent his head low over his plate so nobody would see. How could he ever manage to keep Jen a secret? But he had to, because if he told, they'd forbid him to go back. And he had to go back. We'll set up a signal, Jen had said. Something I can see. But you don't have vents to look out like I do, Luke protested. You can't look out the windows. Oh, when the mirrors work, it's not a problem. Look. She took him over to a window near the sliding glass door and showed him a mirror that reflected a wide view of the Talbot's backyard and the landscape beyond. It showed just the corner of the Garner's barn. But when Jen turned it a bit, the entire Garner house came into a view. Luke wondered if his parents could set up the same kind of system. Then he looked at the mirror again and decided it might be expensive. And anyway, how, could, how would he explain where he'd gotten the idea? So, let's see, Jen said. A signal, I've got it. How about if I look out every morning at night, and if you can come over, you shine a flashlight at me. I'll shine one back if everything's safe. We don't have any flashlights. Not that work, I mean, Luke said. Jen frowned. Why not? We haven't had any batteries in, I don't know, four or five years, Luke explained. 
In fact, he felt proud even to remember what a flashlight was. Okay, okay, Jen said. No flashlight, no computer. Oh, we have a computer, Luke said. My parents do, and I think it still works, but it's in Dad's office in the front of the house. I'm not allowed in there. And anyhow, I'd never be allowed to touch the computer. He remembered once when he was very young, maybe three or four, and he'd followed Mother into Dad's office while she was cleaning. The rows of letters on the computer keyboard had looked like a toy to him, and he'd reached one finger up and tapped the space bar over and over again. Mother had turned around and freaked out. They can find you now! If they were watching... And for weeks after that, she'd, for, she'd hidden him even more carefully than ever, locking him in his room when she had to go outside. Jen rolled her eyes. Don't tell me your family believes that government propaganda stuff, she said. They've spent so much money trying to convince people they can monitor all the TVs and computers. You know they couldn't have afforded to actually do it. I've been using our computer since I was three and watching TV too, and they've never caught me. How about a candle? What? It took Luke a minute to realize she was talking about the signal again. The candles, they're all in the kitchen. I'm not allowed. Jem mimicked the words as he said them. To go in there. They've got you on an awfully short leash, don't they, Luke? She asked. No, I mean, yes, but they're just trying to protect me. Jen shook her head. Yeah, I've heard that one. Ever hear of disobeying? I, Luke started defensively. I'm here, aren't I? Jen laughed. You got me, but listen, if you can't do candles or a flashlight, how about just turning on a light that I can see? Luke was quicker this time figuring out that she was still talking about the signal. The one by the back door, Luke said. You can't miss it. He wasn't allowed to turn that on either, but he didn't dare say not allowed again. Now Luke toyed with his mashed potatoes. His entire conversation with Jen had been like that. She mocked, he defended, but she always got her way. Of course, he defended her to himself. She knew and had seen so much more than him. After he'd finished his story on the couch, she told him hers. First, she said defiantly, my parents had me on a purpose. My parents had me on purpose. 13 years ago, mom already had Bolin Braun from her first marriage. Your brothers? Luke asked. Yeah, Bulletin and Brownlee. Really, but what kind of names are those for knuckleheads like them? Mom was going through some snobbish upper class phase with husband number one. She's had more than one husband? Luke asked. He didn't know that was possible. Sure, Jen said. Dad, who's really my stepdad, is number three. Luke found that so confusing, he just kept his mouth shut. Anyhow, Jen said, mom was dying to have a little girl. So when she and husband number two got together, she went and paid some doctor lots of money so she could get pregnant. What if you'd been a boy? Luke asked. Oh, they got in on the beginning of the gender selection experiments. Luke must have given Jen a particularly blank look because she explained it. That means they made sure I was a girl. Doctors can do that, you know, but the government outlawed the procedure because they were afraid I'd throw the population even more out of whack. I'm sure my parents paid a lot for it. Were your mom and dad trying for a girl? Luke thought about it. He remembered mother saying she wanted four boys, but would she have wanted a girl even more? Someone like mother? He couldn't really picture a girl in his house. They weren't trying for anything, he said. I was a surprise. Luck. Jen nodded. I didn't think they paid for you, she said. Then she put her hand over her mouth. That sounded really terrible, didn't it? I didn't mean anything by it. It's just... You're the first person I've met who wasn't a parent. How do you know I'm not? Luke asked stiffly. Well, Jen waved her hand in a way that made Luke even more aware of the contrast between his ragged flannel shirt and patched jeans and Jen's perfect house. Look, don't be mad. It doesn't matter, or maybe it does, but I think it's cool that you're not a baron. You can help me even more. Help? Luke asked. With the rally. Jen said. She bit her lip. Should I? There's no way you could be an infiltrator, is there? Can I trust you? Of course you can, Luke said. He felt insulted again. Jen leaned her head back and stared at the ceiling, as if an answer were written there. Then she looked back at Luke. I'm sorry, I'm botching this. I am not used to really talking, just on the net. Look, I trust you, but I'm not the only one involved, so let's wait, okay? Okay, Luke said, but he couldn't help sounding injured. Jen leaned over and gave his shoulders a quick shake. Oh, don't say it like that. Say, 
Okay, Jen, I respect your judgment. Or, okay, Jen, whatever you think is best. She giggled. That's what dad tells me. I should say when I disagree with him. Can you believe it? Lawyers. Luke was glad the subject has changed. Your dad's a lawyer? He asked. Jen rolled her eyes. Yeah, all mom's husbands have been. Strange taste, huh? Number one was an environmental lawyer, of all things. Number two was corporate. That's how they got enough money to get me. And number three, dad, is with the government. High up, I might add. But if you're an illegal, Jen hadn't thought he could get any more confused. Jen laughed. Haven't you learned? Government leaders are the worst ones for breaking laws. How do you think we got this house? How do you think I got internet access? How do you think we live? I don't know, Luke said, fully honest. I don't think I know much of anything. Jen patted his head as if he were a little kid or a dog. That's okay, she said. You'll learn. It wasn't long after that that Luke had to, said he had to leave because he was afraid Dad or Matthew or Mark might come in for lunch a little early. He dreaded the trip back. Jen walked him to the door, chatting the whole, chattering the whole way. I'll fix the screen and deal with the security system so no one will ever know you were here, she said. Oh, oh no. Luke followed her gaze. She was staring at three pinpoints of blood on the carpet. I'm sorry, Luke said. That must be from when I scraped my hand. I'll clean it up. There's still time. Secretly, she was glad of the delay. No, no. He said, Jen said impatiently, I don't care about the carpet. It's just that mom and dad will know. And when they see, I don't have any cuts. And then before Luke even knew what she was doing, she thrust her hand toward the torn part of the screen. The jagged edge didn't cut immediately. So she held the screen with her right hand and raked it across her left. Jen, when Jen pulled her hand back, Luke saw a gush even deeper than his. Jen squeezed out a few drops of blood and let them fall to the carpet. There, she said. Stunned, Luke backed out the door. Come back soon, farmer boy, Jen said. Luke turned and ran blindly, not even slowing down to creep alongside the barn. He went straight to the back door of his house, yanked it open, and let it bang shut behind him. Now, sitting at supper, he felt his heart pounding again as he thought of how dangerous that had been. Why hadn't he looked first? Why hadn't he crawled? He poked his fork into the potatoes now gone cold and congealed. He watched mother gathering up dishes, dirty dishes, while dad, Matthew, and Mark leaned back in their chairs, talking of grain yields. Jen had scared him. That was why. Seeing her cut her hand had terrified him. How could she do something like that for him when they just met? <laughs>